Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a bank and a house bank and link the two to each other. Then I will show you how to connect our bank account to the house bank so that in the end we can utilize this house bank for our payment transactions. Sounds good? Then let's get started. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We will start now by creating a new bank via the application called Manage Banks Master Data. Select this application and now you can see we are forwarded to the application to create our new bank master. Please be aware that I'm already on the SAP S4HANA 2023 version. In case you are on a lower release, the application you must open is called Manage Banks. So without the master data over here. Let me quickly show you the ID. Click on the About section. I'm talking here about the application called F6437. Now let's create a new bank. Before I click here, let's actually inspect this button. Here you can see I could create a new bank or a new internal bank. The difference between the two is that this one here is a real physical bank where we can deposit our money, while this here is just a fictitious bank. So it's not existing in real life. For now we will focus on creating a real bank. I will show you the internal bank scenario in a different video. Let's click on this one. We need to provide a country and then we must provide a bank key. And click on create bank. Now in the next screen we need to provide a bank name. So let's just say standard bank. We could define a bank branch. So those bank branches represent different branches of our bank. Meaning that for instance if we have a multinational bank there could be a branch in London and another one in India. So this we could state over here. Then we have here the Swift Big Code which are standardized codes used in international banking to identify the specific bank or financial institution across borders. Let me actually give you an example. This here would be the SWIFT big code for the HSBC UK bank, where the first four letters are the bank code, then the next two letters identify the country, so Great Britain, then the next two letters are used to identify the so-called location code, in this case it would be London, and the next three letters are the branch code. Then we have here the bank group and this is actually used for a payment optimization process. So meaning that this field here is used to group banks that have similar characteristics. For instance, this bank we create over here could receive a bank group, let's say A, and the same bank group could also be stored in our vendor master data, so in our business partner. And then during the payment transaction, the system will notice that our bank and the bank of the business partner belong to the same group and choose this bank for the payment transfer. So it's actually an optimization process. Let's now scroll down a bit. We can provide address information for the bank and can even click on show more to include more communication data. Then we have international address versions. So this section would enable us to display the bank address information in different languages if needed. And over here you can see a change history. For now this is fine, we will click on create. And you can see the bank was created successfully. Let's go back. And next off we will now mark the bank as being our house bank. So let's navigate to the application called Manage Banks Cash Management. Select this application. Let's display what we are talking about. So we are talking here about the application called F1574A. From here we could also jump into the application where we just created our bank. But for now we will search for the bank that we just created and then we will navigate into the bank. Here you can see that most of the information was copied from the former application. However, we will now click here on edit. We could insert more information like a risk business partner or even intraday statement rules, but those are more advanced topics. We want to focus now here on the house bank section. So click on this one and now we can link this bank to our house bank, meaning that this bank should be identified by the system as a bank where we store our money. So where our money is deposited. This is the whole concept of a house bank. So we will now click on create. We must provide a company code. So let's just say 1010 and provide an ID like that. Now click on continue. You can now see we could add some more communication information if needed and even store here some reporting relevant data. For now we will click on apply and you can see the house bank was added to our bank. Please be aware that for each of the company codes, we can have multiple house banks. And also for each of the banks, we could store here multiple house banks as well. So in the end, each house bank is identified by the combination of company code and the house bank ID we just stored. Let's scroll down a bit. You can see we could insert here bank contact persons by clicking on this button. 
we are asked by the system to save our changes. So let's actually do so. As you can see, we are forwarded here to the business partner application. This is because a contact person is a business partner. For now, you will leave it as is. However, I made a separate video about that. I will just leave you the link in the description of this video. So make sure to check it out afterwards. Let's go back. You can see we could add here also related branches or even netting information. But all of those are more advanced topics. Now it's time to actually create our bank account in our house bank. So this is why we click here on manage bank accounts. And we are now forwarded to the manage bank accounts application. Let's inspect this first. Go to the about section. You can see I'm talking here about the application F1366A. We have lots of functions we could utilize over here. So a central search bar. Also, we could manage bank statements from here. Utilize the cash flow analyzer, manage our bank account balances. But for now, we'll click here on the three dots and click on create. We need to provide a company code and an account type. Let's inspect the search help. So here you can see different account types that were created in the system. And by this, we can cluster the bank accounts. So for instance, it could be a current account, a loan account, a deposit account, and so on. For now, we will say current account. And then we will click on continue. Now next off, we will provide an account description like that. We must insert an account number, then the bank country region, the bank key. So this is where we select the search help, insert a bank we just created, click on go and select it. This is also where the linkage is happening. So we link our bank account to our bank that we created in the first step and the bank was linked to the house bank. So in the end, they are all linked together. You will also see this in a second. We have here bank control key and this field actually contains a key for checking the combination of bank key and bank account number. But this is really country dependent. We will leave it free for now. We have the currency and we have the IBAN of our bank account. We can actually click here on generate IBAN and you can see the system derived the IBAN from the country as you can see over here, then the bank key and also the account number. Let's scroll down a bit. You can see here we have the general data also with the opening date of our bank account bank relationship information, but this is also a more advanced topic. And then quite importantly, the house bank account connectivity. Here we will now click on create and you can see all the information was already derived successfully. This is because as said, we linked the bank account to our bank before and as the bank is connected to our house bank, both the company code and also the house bank information was derived automatically. All we now need to do is here insert a house bank account number to identify this house bank account more easily, like that. We must make sure that the validity period is set. Last but not least, if we scroll down, we must provide here a GL account. So actually, if this GL account is not existing, you must create it first, obviously. I skipped this step because it should exist in your system. If not, you can watch my other video about the creation of GL accounts in Fiori. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. Let's now select the search help, select an account and click on apply. And now we click on save as inactive. We will just receive a warning message that our bank is not added to the bank hierarchy, meaning that not all the operations possible for this bank account can be performed. But for now, this is fine. Let's click on close. And now all we need to do is click on activate to utilize this bank account in our payment processes. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. It took a lot of effort. So I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. Also make sure to subscribe to my Patreon, where I post lots of informative documents and where we have a free community chat. The link is in the bio of my channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time.